One of the things you mentioned along your like early journey was dual booting Ubuntu and Fedora at the same time. Why were you doing that rather than just sticking with one or the other? If you happen to remember. I do. I'm trying to think about how to phrase this. Okay. Um, Ubuntu was great for the consumption side of things. Right. Because like it was at the, okay, you got to remember the context of this at this time, okay. Wi-Fi was still difficult on yeah, okay. Linux. So it was great for consumption. It was an easy mode that I needed if I needed to get quickly into my computer and do stuff. Mm -hmm. But my passion and my, my interest in actually like doing stuff for real mm -hmm. was always in Fedora. And mm -hmm. so I kept both because I wanted to, I wanted to see if I could make it so I could use one fully. And so um, Ubuntu was a, 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 a distribution that I really couldn't get involved in and I couldn't really get engaged in. And there was, it was very closed off from, for me as someone who exists outside of the purview of the core Ubuntu team. Right. Um, and that is still kind of true even today, although they're, they're a little bit more open now than they used to be. It's ultimately still canonicals decisions about what goes on and right, everything. Right. Even the community flavors are subject to that. Yeah. Right. The, the excising of flat pack from all yeah. the flavors yeah. recently was an example of this. Right. So, um, the model that Fedora has is more forgiving and more community centric. Mm -hmm. There's this, again, this, this kind of boils down to the philosophies between canonical and red hat. So if you look at, at red hats philosophy, there's this distinction of a project and a product. Mm -hmm. And this distinction ha uh, manifests in several key ways. The most important key way is that projects are not tightly coupled to corp to the company decisions products are. Mm -hmm. And so you see, projects taking lives of their own and getting more stakeholders and becoming more neutral over time. Mm -hmm. They don't start out that way, but they grow to be more neutral over time. And Red Hat in, in some respects is essentially a dispassionate investor mm -hmm. that, that essentially keeps a project afloat. And that, that model maximizes community engagement and participation and support. And then you look at, um, uh, and then you look at things like, you know, the different um, spins and remixes and stuff like that, right? Most recently, I did the Fedora Asahi remix. Oh, but, you know. Oh, were you involved? In, uh, right. I know you're in the SIG now, but were you initially? I made the SIG. Oh, you <laughs> you made the SIG. <laughs> oh, you just forgot to list it. Okay. Yeah. I forgot to list it until a couple oh, so weeks ago. Oh, so you're the guy to thank for that. I didn't realize that. Well, so in the Asahi Linux announcement, they mention... You know me by name, which oh, by the way is still a weird. Forgot feeling. to read it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure yeah, I, have, and, I heard and, about it. Yeah, so I created it. <laughs> I, I created the sig, <laughs> um, and I I helped create. Uh, I, I helped with um, uh, a friend of mine, Davida Kalvika. Mm -hmm. You know, we we got all the software pulled into Fedora and getting it integrated, and then I helped. I made the. Uh, the image descriptions and I work on the tooling along with Davida and a few others to actually build it out. Mm -hmm. um, but like, that's something that is super easy to do in Fedora because all the tooling is open. All the infrastructure is open. All the possibilities are open. Mm -hmm. Like, whereas, and, and like, this is also like all the different spins that exist, the Fedora KD spin, Fedora Kinoite, um, you see the Cinnamon, XFC, the LXQ, all the labs, Python Classroom, um, Astronomy, um, Games Lab. These. If you try to listen to these... we'll be here all night. <laughs> we'll be here all night, yes. There's a lot of them. I think it's like, I think we're up to like almost 30 deliverables. I don't Jeez. know, man. There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> I'm not even talking about like the containers and the cloud images and all the variants. And yeah, no. Like there's a lot going on there. But um, but it, but because of that project product split, mm -hmm. so Red Hat Enterprise Linux is very very small compared to Fedora. There's like I think a twentieth of the packages, tenth or a twentieth of the packages. Mm -hmm. 
the deliverables are considerably smaller. RHEL doesn't provide live images. RHEL doesn't provide other desktops anymore. They used to have KDE. I'm super sad that they got rid of it. I would love to see it come back again someday. They don't have ButterFS. ButterFS is amazing. Again, I hope it comes back someday. Um, but, but they make choices mm -hmm. of their own. And Fedora is not required to follow Red Hat in that respect. There are obviously a few guardrails. Um, but again, Red Hat involved, it acts more as a dispassionate investor mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In, in, in the project, sponsored by Red Hat. And that's a very important thing. Whereas if you look at Ubuntu, it is right. a canonical product right, right. that also manifests itself as a project. But because they are one in the same brand, they are one in the same community, one in the same thing. Mm -hmm. Canonical ultimately has to exert um, tremendous influence and control because that's the thing that they're pitching. That's the thing that they're selling. That's the thing that they're building their business on directly. Mm -hmm. Because they're, and, and this strategy also makes sense because ultimately Ubuntu is derived from Debian, right? In the early days, in the very beginning, in the, and I think it's still true even now. Like if you go look at contributing Ubuntu um, stuff, mm -hmm. uh, they will tell you go to Debian. I've contributed to Debian. That is a whole process in itself. Um, in regards to that, I don't think a lot of people realize like how much of Debian nowadays is canonical employees actually contributing upstream to Debian. Well, so, and again, this comes back to the project product split thing. Mm -hmm. Because Ubuntu's input is exclusively Debian with some exceptions. The way that even canonical employees do stuff, like so, for example, the GNOME stack in Debian is essentially mm -hmm. maintained by canonical employees. So GNOME gets upgraded on Ubuntu schedule in Debian and then imported from Debian back into Ubuntu. Right. So things like that, things that they care about in Ubuntu that they that they as a team maintain, like I believe, I think I don't know this for certain. It's been a while since I've last checked. But I believe one of the kernel maintainers for Debian is actually a canonical employee who happens to also maintain the Ubuntu kernel. And so right. they do some work shared between the two. Um, there's other stuff like this, like some packages, of course, that are things that like NetPlan and whatever, like they maintain those in Ubuntu. But to do that, they also have to maintain it in Debian. And like, even though there's a, a you know, they're maintaining their own packaging for Ubuntu, mm -hmm. they are required to have a package in Debian. So they have a very, uh, they don't consider Ubuntu, at least in their actions. I don't know if that's how they feel about it, like in words or say, but I don't think they consider Ubuntu distinctly a project in its own right. It's more of a productization of Debian, which I think mm -hmm. is a fair characterization of it. Um, but the problem is that Debian's toolings is pretty antiquated and it's really, um, if you think, like it, it's, I know some people have made the comment of like oh, Fedora's infrastructure is all like loosely coupled and like kind of arcane and difficult to follow. I'm like, man, you it can be so much worse. Um, it can be so much worse. Uh, it could be better, but it could also be worse. Um, and I, I, in my view, like seeing how things work in Debian, I feel like Debian is worse mm -hmm. because, um, the way that Debian does things is that each individual maintainer has essentially total control of how that package is maintained. Right. They can they're they can choose to not use source control. They don't have to use Git or SVN or Mercurial or whatever. They can just upload stuff right into the uh, to what they call the archive right. and the FTP masters, which is a team that manages uploads from Debian developers and maintainers, checks it over and then imports it into the into the repositories. Mm. They don't care how it's produced as long as they give them the required inputs, the required artifacts. Um, so I've had to deal with Debian packages that have no version control. I've had to deal with Debian packages that have weird version control right. because, because it's just not, uh, there's no consistency requirements for Debian. It's, it's, that is, that's how worse you can get. Mm -hmm. 